This program is brought to you by Emory University. Uh, here's a preserved lemon. And if you're a cook, you think about what are the things that you want in your pantry that are going to make your food better. Uh, and it's usually these little things. You should never have to go buy preserved lemons. It's the easiest thing in the world. And uh, here's the elements we have. Lemon, salt, and lemon juice. And I use the lemon juice, which you don't even have to have. Uh, put them in a jar, put them in a dark place for about a month or two, and come back and you have something that's been transformed uh, into something that's the basis of most of the flavors in Moroccan cuisine. Uh, that's tied into all the original sort of Mesopotamian and Mediterranean citrus areas. It's the hallmark of their cuisines. So mixing, making just a simple rice dish where you sprinkle preserved lemons and capers into it, you've exalted it into the world of cuisine. And these are the types of foods you should have in your pantry, not boxes of pre-made stuff, jars you could put up that you can forget about. Um, Y'all have heard of Panos and Paul's and all those restaurants, Pano Keratosis. His son went to go visit, and I'll just show you, went to go visit his grandmother in Greece, and uh, his grandmother just has tomato sauce in a big jar, big ceramic jar covered with about an inch of olive oil, and that's how she holds her tomato sauce. No refrigeration. It's in Greece. You can imagine the heat. There's no problem with it. It's beautiful, fresh, just pureed tomatoes, some salt with olive oil covering it from oxygenation. So uh, what we do is we just make a little crosshatch like this. I don't know if all of you can see that. It just opens it up, and it's bound at the one end. We pour salt on it. Some people add a lot of spices in here. You can add sugar if you want. And you just sort of pile the salt in there. And we're just going to lay them all in there. And then we just slowly build this up. Top. So it's really a simple thing. And that's what I love most about it. Is again, as you look to how do you get better with your food? How do you make your food better? Well, pickling and preserving and putting things up is a surefire way to making things from scratch. And one thing like we try to do at Eugene is make absolutely everything from scratch. That's making our tonic water. That's making our bitters. Uh, that's putting up uh, flour infusions for cocktails. Uh, all your own stocks. And it's tough, even in my business, to convince cooks and sous chefs that this is the way to make your food better. Because the industry of our food tells us completely different. They say buy it pre-made, buy stock that's actually not made from the animals uh, that you want stock. You know, you're not even using just chickens and water to make stock. You know, that this would be preserved with some kind of bicarbonate of soda, maybe some color additives some dye, so they get what looks like preserved lemons. And what I love about this, uh, with having two kids, is we just get the children involved in this. We put up a bunch of chili peppers with the kids. Uh, and so when we eat greens, you know, you got to make your winter meal a little interesting. So we've got peppers, actually some from Nicholas's farm, uh, just piled with uh, vinegar and stuffed in... Uh, a jar placed in our refrigerator. Again, forget about it for about a month, and you've got the best pepper vinegar you've ever made. This actually, right here, is a cayenne uh, pepper sauce that uh, I was speaking to a member of the McElhaney family who uh, started Tabasco and owned the Tabasco now empire. This is Edmund McElhaney's original recipe, which is pureeing peppers, mix salt, and then you let it sit, and it gets this thick, yeasty mold on the top. I mean, it's funky looking. People don't trust it'll ever be good. It, my cooks, my wife looking at me crazy, like, chef, you're, you're going to kill somebody. Um, you peel that mold off after about a month and a half. And I mean, it's funky, gray, green, and just it's classic mold, spidery, cobweb kind of stuff. And then, um, then you mix it with vinegar. Let it go sit again. Forget about it. Then you come back another month and a half. 
Let's see, we're talking you know, about Slow Food, this organization you may have heard of. Slow Food's not just brazing. Slow Food is looking way into the future, you know, like wine. You know, they have to wait seven years when they plant a fresh vine before they have grapes they can actually use uh, to make a, a good wine. Uh, with pickles and things like that, they need to sit in the jar and sort of come together. And this is where the magic of food is. So with the peppers, you just let them uh, sit with that vinegar. You pour a, about an inch. I don't even measure. You know, there, there, since there's no recipe, um, you pour vinegar over the top so that it covers the peppers. Let that sit another month and a half and then puree it. Put it through a strainer and you have the best pepper sauce you've ever had. Tastes like cayennes. The heat is sharp and immediate. Uh, and if you go taste Tabasco, and I, I recommend you all to do this, just taste it very simple on like a piece of celery. And you'll, uh, and you just shove things in here. You know, this isn't a, a real delicate kind of thing. Um, taste for the, the moldiness in Tabasco. Because after I went through this process, I really could start tasting the fermentation, the mash, uh, the same way they make bourbon. Uh, you have to, uh, and if you look for it, it's, it's unmistakable. You know, and here is probably the most well-known hot sauce in the world. Uh, it just started with a banker out of Louisiana who'd failed because they had a big recession back then, too. And uh, he went off to his wife's family's island, which had a lot of peppers. And his daughter put up the, uh, put up the labels on the original bottles. And one day, they uh, manufactured enough Tabasco bottles, uh, more than he ever put up in his lifetime. And uh, it just was a simple mash of peppers. And what's so great about this method is you get a uniform pepper sauce, not uh, like a liquid here and pepper puree, because it's gone through this fermentation. And again, we get scared of fermentation. We get scared of mold, our food industry, uh, our government, who I do not look to for recipes <laughs> or how to cook. <laughs> We'd be in a lot of trouble if we listened to the government on every way to cook. Because they would tell you that everything must be refrigerated. Everything has to be below 38 degrees. I got into a discussion with the Department of Ag guy. I had country ham sitting out at room temperature because that's what you should eat. He said, no, you've sliced that ham. You need to get it in the refrigerator. I said, well, this was actually created before refrigeration. Uh, <laughs> this is something you, not the actual ham itself. That'd be an old ham. but." Uh, the whole idea is you shouldn't be scared of your food. And we've gotten this culture in our society where we don't know where our food's from. Uh, you have no idea what soil it was planted in. Uh, our great grandparents would be, uh, they wouldn't believe us uh, that we didn't know where our tomatoes were from or that you would buy tomatoes from South America. Uh, it would just be foreign to them. Um, we have all these scares now, you know, the green onions, don't eat the green onions. Right now it's the peanuts are the big scare. Uh, arugula, uh, spinach is always pops up every three years. Well, it wasn't a problem at Restaurant Eugene. It wasn't a problem at our farmer's tables here in Georgia that, uh, that grow these items. Uh, farmers, dairy farmers, they drink raw milk, right? They know where the milk comes from. They know how healthy and clean the cows are. You have a relationship uh, with a farmer you're not going to have a problem with your food. If you buy locally and seasonally, you're going to know where your food's from, and you don't have to worry about those things. You don't need to worry about growth hormone in your milk. You know, the dairy industry is a whole other crazy topic. But uh, I'm going to just cover it up with a little lemon juice. And don't worry. It's only going to come up about halfway. We're going to just let that sit. All the juice is going to come out of it. Uh, I like to keep it. Uh, all fermentation and pickling, you've got to think about caves and cellars. So where did cheese come from? How do we age wine? Uh, where do we put our pickles? Root cellars. So you want to think about 55 to 65 degrees. Uh, curing meats, you know, I drive my wife crazy. I've got hog jowls hanging in our basement, you know. Uh, sort of eerie, macabre. But, um, but boy, when you pull it down and slice it into your pasta, uh, I mean, you're really cooking. You know, and you're, and you're cooking everything from scratch. And that's just hog jowl, salt, and some spices. 
uh, and you just rub it on there and just hang it up in a rafter, and it's uh, remarkable. Uh, again, that wouldn't work if uh, you weren't aware of uh, you know, the temperature issue or it was dirty, foul meat. So the whole game of preserving and pickling is that it's the freshest it will ever be. That's when you put it up. I would never take strawberries in November, packed from California in some farm I don't know where it's from, and put them up. There's no point. That's, that's the antithesis of what this whole process is. So there's preserved lemons. It's very difficult. <laughs> uh, this will make you a better cook. And this will tie you in to what food is all about. I think I actually practice anthropology a lot more than I ever did at school. Because um, I, I, I was like, I'm not going to be an anthropologist. I'm not going to be Indiana Jones and go out into the field. You know, I mean, I loved it. Um, but this way I live it. You know, this is our culture. This I'm tied into something uh, thousands of years old. And it's amazing that we're in danger now, and really only in the last 75 to 100 years, of totally eradicating our collective memory of this method. And we wonder why tomatoes don't taste like tomatoes anymore. And we wonder why uh, you eat a steak and you're like, you know, there's, there's no beef here. You know, the classic, where's the beef? But it comes down to fundamentally we don't know where our food is. We don't know that if we eat uh, only three of the muscles from a cow, for example, where does the rest of that cow go? You know, there's a sort of a waste culture in this. And the whole beautiful thing about being a better cook, and again, I think about that quite a bit, is I shouldn't waste anything. So I should be able to cook everything. The stocks should come from the bones. Gelatin shouldn't just be a sheet. Uh, I should know how to make gelatin. And it's really easy if you've got pig trotters and farmers that have ears and tails and stuff like that. You know, it, Holman and Finch, our public house, I, I try to put things on the menu that people in the industry tell me is not successful, which are all the parts that everyone throws away. Brains, sweetbreads, liver, kidneys, uh, chitlins. Um, they're on the menu, and they sell. People actually like food like this. You know, they, they crave, I think, I think we all crave a, a sense of authenticity and from scratch flavor. And, and, it, and it can't be mimicked. Uh, by buying pre-made items and putting it together. So when these get about five months old, and they'll just keep, I, I've never seen preserved lemons go bad. They'll just get richer in flavor. The skin becomes leathery. You just put it into chicken soup with rice for your kids. I mean, it's infinite, the variety. If you want to throw star anise in there, if you want to make it sweet, uh, I love sweet and savory. Uh, it almost becomes like a candied lemon. Sugar is another great preserver. That's why you know, we have the, all the wonderful jams and jellies. Here's something I love, and we're going to pickled eggs. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.